In the last video, we talked about what it meant to be a normal subgroup. Now, we're going to look at a, in, what is, in general, a better way of figuring out whether a subgroup is normal. The problem with the base definition is that, well, basically you need to check every single element of G, compute the left coset and the right coset, and see if they're equal. Sure, sometimes you can shortcut the process, but it turns out that looking at something like this ends up being a lot better for verifying things. It doesn't seem like it's a very different statement here, but it turns out that this allows us to make use of a lot of properties that we've studied before to help us show the properties we need. So subgroup H of G is normal in G if and only if when I take that subgroup and do what we call conjugating it by x, taking x, h, x inverse, we don't need to think about groups or subgroups. All it is is that that has to be a subset of h for all x in g. OK, let's show how this works. So let's take a look at a couple of groups that we haven't really considered too much recently. So let's say we have the group G is GL2R. And what that was, that was real valued 2 by 2 matrices with non-zero determinant. And the operation being matrix multiplication. Then I'm going to take as my subgroup as SL2R, which was again real valued 2 by 2 matrices, but these specifically had a 1 determinant. So this is definitely a subgroup of that. And now let's consider any sum, so in, in terms of the definition, it'd be some x in G. Well, that's going to be some matrix with a non-zero determinant. Well, the thing to remember is that Certainly, if it's got a non-zero determinant, it's got an inverse. And the determinant of x is 1 over the determinant of x inverse. OK, so if I take anything here, if I take x, h, x inverse, okay, let's let h be any matrix in lowercase h be any matrix in capital H, and I look at x lowercase x lowercase h x inverse, what's the determinant of that? Well, when I take the determinant of a product of matrices, I can take the product of each matrix individually and multiply them. But we just said the determinant of x inverse is 1 over, or the determinant of x is 1 over the determinant of x inverse. So wait a minute, the determinant of x, h, x inverse is the determinant of h. Since h was in h, that meant that it had a 1 determinant. So x, h, x inverse is in h. There we've got it. So for any h in h, when I do this x, h, x inverse, I get another element of h. So that tells us x capital H X inverse is a subset of H. And then we have it. So H must be normal in G. 
Let's take a look at another example. Let's say we're looking at G as a group. that has only one subgroup, H, of a given order of, let's say, order N. Then I'm going to claim that H must be normal in G. And why is that? Well, if I look at that x, h, x inverse thing, we actually showed this a few weeks ago, that this is a different subgroup, well, I won't say different, is a subgroup of g. For any x, when I do that conjugation thing, I get a subgroup of g. But the number of elements in that is the same as the number of elements in H. So that means that this is a subgroup of order N. This has to equal H. Well, certainly if it's equal to H, then it's a subset of H. Therefore, it's normal. 